Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on Google TensorFlow 2.0. I'm Dr. Ryan from Stemplicity. At Stemplicity, we offer premium content on science, technology, engineering, and math. We even teach artificial intelligence and personal finance in a simple, easy, and fun way. We will be releasing new weekly YouTube videos, so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I have some great news for you. Google has released a new version of TensorFlow, which is TensorFlow 2.0. For those of you guys who are not familiar with TensorFlow, TensorFlow is Google's most powerful open source platform for building and deploying AI and machine learning models. TensorFlow has a ton of comprehensive tools and libraries that enable any developer or researcher to build scary, powerful AI models and deploy them in practice. TensorFlow 2.0 release is great for AI developers out there because it is now easier than ever to develop AI models in just a few lines of code and deploy them in practice. So let's see what's new in TensorFlow 2.0. And I will start with the first feature. TensorFlow now has eager execution by default, which means we can evaluate operations immediately. This will make your life 10 times easier when you build and debug your AI models. Eager execution means that you can now interact with TensorFlow 2.0 line by line in Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook without the need to define a graph and run sessions and all the mess that we had in TensorFlow 1.0. Let me show you what I mean by this. So let's assume that we want to add two variables, okay? Just a very simple um, operation in TensorFlow 1.0. And I'm going to show you it was just a headache. It was just, you know, horrible. And that's why TensorFlow 2.0 will make our life 10 times easier. So let's, let's take a look at it. First, here, I'm going to install TensorFlow 1.113.01. Uh, so if you're on the cell, that's what you get. Afterwards, here, in order to, let me zoom in, in order to define uh, two variables, first, you need to import TensorFlow. And then second one, you have to first construct what we call it a graph. And then afterwards, you execute the graph, which is a little bit like, you know, anti-Pythonic in a way. In Python, we just define a variable. We can just visualize or just put number in there, and we can print that variable. We can add a mathematical or perform a mathematical operation to it. Here, it's a little bit different. So first, I need to define two variables, x and y. I put 3 and 5 in it. And then afterwards here, what, you, what happened is that TensorFlow created a graph for us. But the point is that it did not execute the graph yet. So that's why we need to define what we we'll call it a session. So let's make an attempt and actually add these two variables together. So we're going to say, okay, z equals to tf.add x plus y. It's, you know, very intuitive. So if you go ahead and try to print the summation of x and y, you will find that the answer here, as you guys can see here, there was no answer, basically. It will tell you, okay, now I define the graph. So TensorFlow actually defined the graph, but it did not execute the actual operation. In order to do that, you have to go to what we call it the execution phase. So as you guys can see here, I have to define a session. So I'm going to say with tf.session as, as S-E-S-S. -S, we have to first initialize the variables. So ses.run, you have to run what we call it global variables initializer. And then you have to run the session. So we're going to say ses.run. And you pass along the answer here, which is Z, and then you would be able to print the results. Obviously, that for us, you know, doesn't make any sense. However, that was how TensorFlow 1.0 worked. And forget about it, okay? Like, we're not going to be doing this anymore. Actually, moving forward, what we're going to do is that we're going to use TensorFlow 2.0. So I'm going to show you how, how can we do it. So let's add two variables in TensorFlow 2.0. First, you're going to install TensorFlow GPU 2.00 alpha. And then afterwards, what we're going to do here, which is very, very intuitive, you first, you're going to define the same variable x, the same variable y. OK, you put 3 in x and 5 in y. And then you're going to perform the operation. So z equals tf dot add x and y. And then if you print it out, you know, like luckily, you're just going to get the answer right away. And that's what we call it eager execution. So the eager execution is defined by default in here. So you can just print out whatever variable, sum, multiply, do whatever you want. OK? The second important feature in TensorFlow 2.0 is the use of Keras at the high level default API. And for those of you guys who haven't used Keras before, 
It's unbelievably easy to work with. Keras syntax is very Pythonic. And for those of you guys who have used Python before, we know that Python language is super easy to learn. Let me show you what I mean by this. Let's see how can we build a mini brain to classify images okay, of, um, of fashion classes. So let's get started. First, you need to download what we call it fashion MNIST data. Okay, so tf.keras.datasets.fashionmnist, which is pretty amazing because Keras has all the data sets, a lot of data sets actually pre already um, uh, readily available. So you can just download them, it's really simple. So you're gonna say fashion.mnist.loaddata, and then you're gonna get the training images, the training labels, testing images, and testing labels. So building an artificial neural network model using Keras is actually easier than ever. So in TensorFlow 2.0, as I mentioned, TensorFlow 2.0 includes Keras as the default API, okay? So let's see how can we build a very simple artificial neural network model in just one single line of code. So we're gonna say model equals cf.keras.sequential, and then within the sequential, we're just gonna build our model in a sequential fashion or sequential way. First, you're gonna define your inputs. So now we have images that are 28 pixels by 28 pixels. You feed it into the input layer, and then you add what we call it a dense layer. So we're gonna add a dense layer that consists of 128 neurons, and we're going to define a ReLU activation function, which stands for rectified linear units. Afterwards, we're gonna have an additional, another layer, which is gonna be the output layer, and that will be again dense, which means it's a fully connected network. And then we're gonna have 10 outputs. Why? Because here obviously we have 10 classes. We wanna classify images, you know, to either like sneakers, uh, jackets, jackets and stuff, okay? All right, and the output here would be softmax because what we're looking for, we're looking for kind of the probability within of each of these, all of these classes. And then, then we can be able to classify images. Afterwards, you compile your model so you're gonna say model.compile, you specify the optimizer, and we're gonna use Adam optimizer. And then we'll specify the loss, which is sparse, categorical, cross entropy, which means, because here, we're classifying different ca categories of, of classes, that's why you can use that loss. If you have a binary classification, which means it's only zero or one, you can simply use binary cross entropy instead of sparse, categorical, um, cross entropy. And then you define your metrics. What we're looking for is that we wanna improve the accuracy of the model. We just want it to, the predictions coming out of our model match our true labels or ground truth. And that's all what it is. You define the model, you compile the model. Let's go ahead and actually fit the model. So we're gonna say model.fit, we'll apply the fit method to our object. And then we're gonna pass along our training data, which is train images, train labels, and then we'll specify how many epochs we wanna run our train our model. And as you guys can see here, it's pretty, again, incredible. You built here just a mini brain, like literally a mini brain that can classify any fashion images, okay? And, and that's just pretty incredible. Again, it's just scary, scary, scary um, uh, um, stuff. So if you guys take a look at it, you'll find that we started at an accuracy of 0.7 or 71%. And then we increase over time, 77, 78, 81, and then we reach 82% accuracy after just five epochs with, you know, like like in within like, I, I don't know, within let's say 30 seconds or maybe maybe like one, like a minute, which is again, pretty incredible. And that's how you would be able to build a mini brain or mini artificial neural networks using Keras API in TensorFlow 2.0. This is mind blowing achievement. You have literally built a mini brain to classify images in just 10 lines of code. And it took us a couple of minutes to train. Something like that just keep me up all night. Can you imagine what would AI do in 50 years from today? With this rate of exponential, mind-blowing progress, we should probably reach human-level intelligence. And yes, Elon Musk's fear of AI is probably to the point. The third important feature is that TensorBoard is now integrated with TensorFlow 2.0, and it can be easily called. TensorBoard enable us to track the network progress, such as accuracy, loss, throughout various epochs, along with the graph showing various layers of the network, which is pretty incredible. In addition, TensorBoard provides a built-in performance dashboard that can be used to track device placement and help us minimize bottleneck during model execution and training. 
Let me show you what I mean by this. So we're gonna launch TensorBoard and see how it works. So let's see how can we use and launch TensorBoard. So if you guys take a look at it here, we are gonna use pretty much the same example that we have used in the past. Again, fashion MNIST data, we're gonna load the data set, we're gonna have our training data, we're gonna have our testing data, and then we're gonna build our model, again, in a sequential fashion, defining the inputs, which is 28 by 28, and then we're gonna have a dense layer of 128 neurons, followed by the output layer consisting of 10 neurons, because they have 10 outputs only. And then we're gonna compile the model using Atom Optimizer, we specify the loss, and we'll specify the metrics, which is accuracy. And that's kind of the magic. That's how you can actually call TensorBoard, which is a very, very um, intuitive kind of visualization dashboard. You can visualize a model, you can um, see the loss, you can see the accuracy across various epochs. I'm gonna show you how it works right now. So first here, we're gonna create a log. So here we'll specify the, the date time first. And then afterwards, we're gonna call tf.keras.callbacks.tensorboard. And then we're gonna specify that would be my call. And then here, that will be my callback. I'm gonna specify it here when I actually fit my model. So we're gonna define callbacks would be tensorboard underscore, underscore callback. And when you do that, you will find that after you run this command to launch tensorboard, you will find that that's what you get in here, which is again, pretty, pretty incredible. As you guys can see here, you can visualize all the uh, model accuracy across various epochs, our five epochs here. And then you can visualize the loss as well. You can even zoom in. So if you press Alt and then using the mouse, you can actually like kind of, you know, zoom in certain area. You can zoom out if you want. And that's how you can visualize the loss and visualize the accuracy as well. And then there's obviously tons of features here. I'm just gonna focus on the important ones. Second one, you can even visualize the graph of the model. So as you guys can see here, here I have first a flattening layer. So I'm taking my 28 pixels by 28 pixels, flattening it up so I can feed it to my fully connected dense network. So I can have a dense layer here, followed by another dense layer, and that will be pretty much the output. And that's how you build what we call the graph for my network, which is again, pretty incredible. Then here you can visualize as well our distribution and then here you can visual, visualize the histogram, which is kind of the distribution of the different layers, um, the weights of various layers across various epochs. So you can see if the distribution is changing or not across all epochs. Again, please bear in mind that there are tons of features, tons of elements to discuss here. I just want to give you a sense of how can we launch TensorBoard and how can we actually um, visualize it and utilize it as well. The fourth important feature is that TensorFlow enable distributed strategy, which makes you develop your model once and then decide how you want to run it over multiple GPUs or even TPUs. This will dramatically improve the computational efficiency with just two additional lines of code. Let me show you how to do it. So if you wanted to run your model using the distributed strategy, okay, so what you could do, you, what you need to do is first, you need to define your strategy. So strategy will be tf.distribute.mirrored strategy. And what you could do here, you can say, okay, that's exactly the same, the model that I defined before. You just need to add that, that line here, in addition to obviously that line. And that here, you can specify basically your whatever strategy you want. If you want to run this model across multiple GPUs, multiple TPUs, you can do that very easily. And what you could do here as well is that you can, if you go to runtime, you can change runtime type. And it's pretty amazing because in Google Colab, what you could do is that you, can, you don't need to actually own GPUs or even own like TPUs. And TPUs, if you guys are not familiar with it, it's called Tensor Processing Unit. It's mainly like an ASIC, like a chip, dedicated specifically to run um, uh, AI models. So it's just very efficient, 10 times faster than just regular CPUs. So if you guys can see here, you can pick if you want to run a NUN or you run a GPU or run a TPU even, which is again, pretty incredible. Just imagine, you know, if you are just, you know, like uh, sitting on a beach somewhere and just training an artificial neural network model on the cloud using, you know, like Google's powerful platform. It's just pretty incredible. I just can't imagine what's going to happen within the next, you know, 20 years in the field of AI. It's pretty incredible. And that's how you can use distributed strategy to simply run uh, your model whatever, whatever you, the way you want it. There are a ton of new features for TensorFlow 2.0, but I just picked the four top that I wanted to share with you. And as Gary V said, now let's the best time to be alive 
and now it's the best time to master AI and machine learning. The field is exploding with opportunities and career prospects. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Enjoy AI and happy learning.